Good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's City Council meeting and Committee of the Whole meeting. I proudly call this City Council meeting to order, and I kindly ask our City Clerk to please take the roll. Bruno. Here. Burkhart. Here. Lemons. Here. Ruby. Here. Caven. Here. Kilberg. Here. Malaja. Here. Marks. Here. McGowan. Here. Swanson. Here. We are all present, and we begin our City Council meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd kindly ask none other than Maz to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mary Agnes. Let the record show that Brenda Shorey's late. The Daily Herald was here for 20 minutes prior to you. Folks, we we'll begin tonight's uh, meeting with just a moment of silence, if we may. Uh, all of you received an email from me earlier today, and I do apologize for the delayed sending of that email. Uh, Mrs. Evelyn Smith, uh, lifelong, well, not lifelong, but a long resident of Geneva, died at the tender age of 92 recently. And her husband, Howie Smith, the former mayor of Geneva from 1957 to 61, and his family uh, spent a day celebrating Mrs. Smith yesterday at Malone. Uh, Extended family, multiple grandkids, great grandkids. It was really quite the celebration. And uh, in honor of Mrs. Smith and certainly a bow to Howie and their family, I lowered the flag to honor her and promised that we begin tonight's <coughs> meeting with a moment of silence to recognize her extraordinary life. Thank you very much. Ready for this, Roger? All right. Item four, folks. Amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening? Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine and can be considered and acted upon with one motion. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Clemens, seconded by, oh, excuse me, that was Bruno. Motion by Alderman Bruno, seconded by Alderman Clemens. Any questions or comments? Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Ruby. Aye. Cabin? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Malaja? Aye. Marks? Aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Burkhart? Aye. Clements? Aye. Item 5 passes unanimously. We skip down to item number 10, municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Total bills are $3,648,074.33. Mayor, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount can be found in tonight's packet on the city website. A motion by Alderman Bruno to pay the bills as presented, which are available in our packets and on the city's website, is on the floor. Is there a second? Second, second by Alderman Burghart. Any additional questions or comments? Hearing none, seeing none, Mr. Clerk. Caven. Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Maladra? Aye. Marks? Aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Burkhardt? Aye. Clements? Aye. Ruby? Aye. With 10 aldermen present, the vote is unanimous. Folks, we are skipping down already to new business and public comment. Anyone present this evening? Any comments? Anyone from the dais? I just have one, so. Alderman Burkhardt, do you? No? Just a reminder to our audience tuning in and perhaps uh, the media as well this Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. at the Department of Public Works 1800 South Street is the Strategic Plan Advisory Committee's public forum on helping build and develop and refine our uh, strategic plan. Uh, it should be noted that this is a posted meeting for the Strategic Plan Advisory Committee only not for the City Council so we are encouraging those who wish to participate to do so and then we will have the benefit of that final report once it is constructed. Anything else under new business? Okay. Item 13, folks, closed session on collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. Is there a motion to adjourn to closed session for that exclusive purpose? So moved. Alderman Bruno makes the motion. Alderman Marks makes the second. A roll call, no, excuse me. A, yes, a roll call vote is in order. Excuse me. Kilberg. Aye. Malajra. Aye. Marks. Aye. McGowan. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno. Aye. Burkhart. Aye. Clements. Aye. Ruby. Aye. 
We are unanimous in, with yeah, respect. Sorry, Kevin. Oops. Aye. We are unanimous with respect to going into closed session. There is no action being taken tonight. This shall not take long. We should be back in 90 minutes. I'm happy to entertain a motion to return to open session. Motion by Alderman Marks. Seconded by Alderman Clemens. All in favor of returning to open session. Is that what it is? <laughs> Please say aye. Aye. We are back in open session. Anything else for the benefit of the council or community before we entertain a motion to adjourn? If not, a motion to adjourn is in order. I believe that was Alderman Bruno who made the motion. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. We will take a brief hiatus for the clerk to switch over the tape and then jump right into our committee of the whole meeting. All paperwork. We're a paperless community. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the tonight's committee of the whole meeting is called to order. Let the record show, Mr. Clerk, that all the aldermen are present. Item two is to approve regular committee of the whole meeting minutes from September 3rd, 2019. Is there a motion? Motion by Alderman McGowan. Second by Alderman Clements. Any questions? Any comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Items of business 3A is to consider draft resolution authorizing the execution of a professional services agreement with SB Friedman Development Advisors for the Tax Increment Finance Consulting Services. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Marks. Second. Seconded by Bruno. This matter is on the floor. Considerable history regarding what brought us to where we are this evening. Ms. Dawkins, all yours. Uh, based upon a recent policy discussion, or rather several recent policy discussions regarding development in the Southeast Master Plan area, staff is recommending the execution of a professional services agreement with SB Friedman Development Advisors to evaluate the eligibility and identify an optimal boundary for the potential TIF district. The proposed work to determine eligibility includes field work, analysis of conditions, preparation of documentation, and support with designation procedures. The work is divided into phases, so expenses are not incurred if the project parameters are altered. SB Friedman was selected for some financing consultant in 2014 when reconnaissance work was initiated. The selection process thoroughly vetted qualified candidates. Such selection complies with the city code requirements for professional services contracts and provides continuity, a continuity benefit to the city. Uh, we do have Kathleen Timoshenko, our economic development director here, to also answer any additional questions you may have regarding this item. Members of the committee, any questions or comments for Ms. Tibischenko? Alderman Swanson. Uh, in looking at the, con the proposed contract with the uh, SB Friedman, it seems that it's going beyond eligibility and it's going to actually an approval process with the mailing and, and other items. Is, is that a correct reading? Yes, but as Administrator Dawkins said that the way it's set up, is if we decide to stop at any point, we're not charged for that work. And let me just clarify too, because there's, a, there's kind of a term of art. We've already done an eligibility study. This is a feasibility study. And I know it doesn't seem like difference, but, but this is truly the feasibility. What should the boundary be? Does it qualify? And all of that. We wouldn't do a mailing though right. for a feasibility. That, that's going to the next step to get the approval. And I thought, and, and I'll read the minutes it, from our meeting before, the consensus was to initiate discussions with these other districts in relation to TIF funding to prepare for a future feasibility study, all in the effort to work to establish adequate public assistance for development. Now, that's different than actually going and doing the mailings and, and preparing for a TIF, because I don't think we've had a robust conversation about whether or not we want a TIF for, for this area. So it seems inappropriate to me to approve this contract the way it's presented when we haven't approved a TIF is the way we want to go. So I, th I think we ought to do it in stages, and, and the true process would be we, we approve the feasibility. That's a piece of it. It's uh, 10000 of this 27000 We could approve that, and then we should approve the TIF and have that conversation before we approve this contract. So to me, 
approving a contract that includes things that we haven't approved the TIF is inappropriate. I think we've skipped process steps. And then when we get to looking at whether or not we want a TIF for that district, the conversation would be, well, you approved the contract already. So I think we're, we're out of order with this proposal. If I may chime in for a moment, and Stephanie or Kathleen, please correct me, but a, the study that we are considering this evening, if it comes back, yay, we still have to consider whether or not to engage the other governing bodies on actually passing the resolution for the TIF through the JRB, et cetera, correct? Correct. And you would also have uh, information provided to you because you would have to set the time for a public hearing. So the council would need to approve the t setting the time for a public hearing. So should either the study come back with negative findings or you determine you didn't want to move in that direction, you would have that opportunity to do that at that time. This, this is a pretty standard uh, proposal. So and, and I, and I think, and Ron can correct me if I'm wrong, but once we embark on this process, we have to notify the other taxing bodies. That's there, there's a statutory requirement that once we embark on this, regardless before it gets anywhere, we have to notify them. I will note that we have already informally notified all of the taxing bodies that this item was coming forward, and if they had questions, that they could give us a call. Um, and I heard from two of the two of the six, seven, eight, I don't know. I heard from two of the taxing bodies, um, neither of which had questions. Uh, so that's where we're at tonight. And if I recall correctly, Alderman Marks uh, kind of was the one who said, we've spent, we've spent 1.2 million or more, and this makes sense to do the next step. And the next step was feasibility, um, was, was my fe was That's what my we were asking for. We were asking for direction to conduct a feasibility study which to me is phase one of this detailed budget, not phase two, phase three, or phase four. Anything else, Alderman Swanson? No, no. Anyone Thank else? Thank you. Alderman Ruby. I support Alderman Swanson's stance on this. I agree with what he's saying, and I'm on the same page as he is. So I, could we propose um, an amendment? It's certainly a pleasure to do so, or prerogative, rather, excuse me. Alderman Clements. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just, I'm just asking, is, is there a, um, are there, is there, are there reasons, I know you've discussed it a little bit, Stephanie, are there reasons why you couldn't bust that phase one out and make that its own item? Are there logistical, practical reasons why it, it needs to be, why we should keep it this way? I mean, is it, does, it, does it matter to the city that much? Is there... I mean, I think the idea is that you enter into an agreement with the consultant who will shepherd you through the process. If at any time the process isn't, doesn't make sense or the council says no, the process stops. But you already have the agreement in place to get you from point A to point Z. Thank we you. also didn't, I mean, if you started to separate it out, then there would be questions about us separating it out and not bringing it uh, out transparently. So I, I think this is the best way to do it, which is why we're proposing it this way. But Thank you. Of course, Alderman. Okay, so just just so I understand what we're talking about, I keep hearing about phase one, phase two. So the mailing is phase three. Phase two is preparing maps, obtaining boundary legal descriptions, et cetera, et cetera. So what you're proposing is that we do phases one and two and stop short of phase three, correct? What are we shaking our head at? Am well, I reading I, this I, one? I think, what, I think he's saying phase one. So to me, understanding feasibility comes along with having a map of the proposed district. We want to know what we're looking at that's feasible, right? Uh, obtaining the legal description of that, I think that makes sense as well. 
preparing a draft redevelopment plan and project. This is basically telling us what we would be going forward to do. So for me, I can see doing phase one and phase two. And then regarding the mailing, my question for Kathleen is, are we paying for this up front? And then if we decide not to do it, do we get money back? No, we're not paying for it up front. If, if we stop after any of these phases, we will only pay for what we did. For what we did, right. And there's, there's bumpers on this right. process where you're coming back to the... Okay, just making sure. So we would be out no money for doing this. And the idea that we would go ahead with the TIF just because the contract with Friedman says we're going to do a mailing, I, I don't know that this council would actually do that. <laughs> So I personally don't see, I, I would want to do phase one and two, and regarding phase three, I'm ambivalent. We could take it out or leave it in. I don't see the harm of leaving it in, although if people feel it does imply that this is an already made decision, then we should probably take it out. Um, and certainly phase four, we would not be doing a public, public approval process until we've decided that we're going to go ahead and do the TIFs defined in phases one and two. So since the contract doesn't force us into phase three, it doesn't force us into phase four, but gets them out of the way if indeed we do decide to go forward, I say we could leave it, but I wouldn't be terribly opposed if we take them out. Before we continue, I'd like to ask our city attorney to uh, address the issue of severability within the contract and what that means from a practical standpoint. So I think Alderman Swanson's points are well taken, and it's easily re reviewed to make sure there are no commitments for the city council for services not undertaken. So should the council stop at any point in time and not wish to proceed to phases three, four, et cetera, there's easy and clearly understood language that could be inserted, I suspect would be standard boilerplate language, which would cut off any li potential liability. I suspect Friedman, which is a well-known consultant, wouldn't attempt to try and collect for services not undertaken. But the language would be self-enforcing uh, that they would not be able to. Anyone else before I recognize Mr. Swanson a second time? Ms. Burghardt? Just to clarify, so after phase one, uh, step seven would be conduct call to discuss eligibility findings. We will conduct a call with city staff to discuss our findings and recommendations to finalize the TIF boundary, to advise the city of any annexations, subdivisions, or other actions that will be required based on the proposed TIF boundary, and we will discuss a strategy with the city for per pursuing TIF district designation. So that says we will conduct a call with city staff. Would is are you saying that will all? Will that also come back to us to say, yes, we want to move on to step two after, or phase, I'm sorry, phase one? We're already past phase one. We're past eligibility, as I understand it. Or well, doing feasibility. Feasibility, okay. okay. Um, if there was no attempt, or sorry, if the council did not wish to proceed, we would simply tell the, uh, the consultant to stop services and not proceed further. I'm saying, I guess, will we as a council? I guess your concern is, yeah. is staff going to just go forward if the consultant says, yes, we should move forward with a TIF study? Staff would not do that. We would come back to the council and share the results of that phase one. Okay. So we, we will have another. Yeah. Bite get like two or three bites of the apple. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Swanson. My, my biggest concern, and I brought it up at the July 22nd meeting, is that we have not been provided any numbers whatsoever with respect to what we're looking at with this TIF. We have not been told, here are the millions of, that we're spending on this, this, and this. Here is the electric, here is the water, here, are the, here is the roadway, and here's how we're going to fund it. I believe at July 22nd I asked for pro forma to the extent that they're available or some range so we can see if we do the TIF, here's how the finances are going to look over the course of the TIF. And, and that has not been provided to date. So my point of this conversation today is we have not approved a TIF for this area. We have not seen any numbers that we can uh, make comparisons to. So to approve this uh, proposed plan with the, uh, the uh, Friedman is inappropriate until we have that conversation. So that's the point that I'm trying to make today. Thank you. Before I recognize Alderman Maladra a second time, anyone else wish to speak who has not yet spoken? Yeah. 
Stephanie. I mean, I would say um, in the city manager's report, city administrator's report, we did answer some of your questions. A lot of that information is in the SEMP master plan. Those numbers are there. Part of the feasibility is to finalize some of that. So to say we've provided nothing, I don't think is completely accurate. I think, I think on, on September 6th, we provided to the council a, several pages of answers to questions that were asked regarding the SEMP, including what, what, what the current property tax revenues are by each district, what we think the probable costs are. Uh, we gave information of the assessed value over a 10-year period. There was a lot of, there were nine pages of information in that report, so I'm not sure what we didn't provide. We don't have the comparison of how we're going to fund it, or we various funding, Sorry. Yeah. various funding methodologies and why some would not be appropriate. Um, we did not show, if we do a TIF, here's how the finances would look. Here's how long the TIF would be. We did not discuss that. So there's a lot more detailed information that we should be discussing about whether to do this TIF or not that we have not had those conversations. Would it be a 10-year TIF, a 15-year TIF, or a 23-year TIF? All of those are appropriate discussions, and I think those need to happen before we approve going full steam ahead. So my question. Well, let me just clarify, that, that's literally the information that would be provided via this engagement with S.B. Friedman. Right. Well, but some of what they're going to do is the mailings and, and the process. That's assuming then that we're going full bore. No, but that's the part of the severability issue that the city attorney brought up. Through phase one, phase two, et cetera, the boundaries, the maps, the annexations, all that stuff, that's what helps ultimately build the numbers in terms of our investment, the TIF investment, impact two, et cetera. So I don't know how we can create numbers out of whole cloth without having everything else defined first. If we reach that point and realize that this is so absorbent, or excuse me, exorbitant a number, and this council feels uncomfortable pursuing it, even through the TIF or any other funding schemes, then we simply say, no, thank you. Stop services, and we'll have to take pause and reconsider. I, am I oversimplifying that, or is it? No. Mr. Maladra? Your microphone, sir. That, that mean guy from the control booth said that. Yeah, okay, that. I'll start over. I was born in a log cabin. Um, <laughs> as, as, so my take is what you just said. Phase one gives us the information Bob is asking for. Um, that information, combined with the information that the staff provided, will be the input to a thorough discussion about whether or not this council wants to go forward with a TIF to fund the Southeast development. If this council decides that's not what they want to do, we're not going to do any mailings, we're not going to do any uh, processes to have the TIF enacted. Um, so I think, I think that you know, this agreement just basically moves us forward to be able to make that decision. Didn't say it as well as you did. It allows us to begin. Kidding. It does not compel us to finish. Right. Okay. Alderman Kilburn. Um, I assume that what we're going to be doing at some point in time is pulling together a composite of information that we have available for Friedman. Is that correct? As, as part of the study, we will have responsibilities To provide well. them with yes. preliminary information. Yes. So in other words, you're going to be extracting a lot of the information probably that the council will have interest in when you provide it to Friedman. Yes. Maybe you could provide that same information to the council so we have an idea and that we don't have to ferret out this information over the last nine months going back through the plethora of information that we've received specific to the, uh, the TIF that we're entertaining here tonight. Is that? Uh, well, if you, if you go forward with phase one and phase two, right, you'll have a book. You'll have a book of information 
that right. has. But you're going to be providing them with preliminary information, is that correct? Yes, we have some responsibilities to provide information. Yeah. What would, as an example, what would that entail? We have, um, like, they'll look at different factors, and some of the factors will be from city records. Um, information about the properties as much as we have it'll it'll be a little more difficult because some of them are unincorporated but we'll have to provide them information any history information we have about the property um, any information that we can pull from different sources but they will pull some of it you know the way that things are all on the computer now you can access a lot of those records but we'll be providing records to um, with respect to the project from our end and the developer will be providing information. So it'll be just bringing all the information together that's listed um, in the draft. So if we move forward with this, what would be the timetable as far as the gathering of this information? I think that there's a timeline in here. Okay. Um, so we had... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, uh, do you want me to read it? Based yeah. on the scope of the work outlined herein, our experience with similar projects, we estimate it'll take 30 to 45 days to complete the TIF eligibility reconnaissance study, 30 to 45 days to complete the redevelopment plan and project, and 90 to 120 days to complete the public approval process. Okay. So in other words, we'll probably be into 2020, though, before we'll see anything finalized here, uh, based off of yes. what we're talking, uh, based off of the timeline that you provided. Uh, in our packet this week. Um, is there a possibility that we could see some preliminary information as it relates to the, the, uh, the process and, and what Freeman will be working with uh, at some point in time uh, this fall? Sure. Like I, think that, I, think, I think Alderman Swanson makes some good points as it relates to the depth of information that we have here and, and uh, what, what we're working with, at, at least at this point in time. And we understand this is somewhat of a work in progress, but we'd like to be a part of that progress, is what I guess what I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on the dais? Mr. Clerk, on the matter, motioned and seconded. Item 3A, please take the roll call. McGowan. Aye. Swanson. Nay. Bruno. Aye. Burkhart. Uh, aye. Clements. Aye. Ruby. Nay. Cabin. Aye. Kilberg. Aye. Aladra. Aye. Marks. Aye. Item 3A, the motion passes with eight affirmative votes, two nay votes. We jump to item 3B as in boy, consider approval of certificate of completion for First Street Row Homes. So moved. Motion by Alderman Bruno. Second. Seconded by one of the owners, Alderman Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments regarding the certificate of completion? Ms. Dawkins, please provide us with an eloquent sure. brief summary. So you've seen these before. This is a certi certificate of a completion for the public sidewalks, parkway restorations, parkway trees, public water main, electric improvements, and public sanitary sewer main to accommodate the First Street row homes. Subdivision at 401 North First Street. Uh, with the COC, the corresponding subdivision performance bond supplied by the developer will be reduced to a 10% amount to serve as a one-year warranty on the completed improvements. And uh, should there be any additional questions, uh, Director Babica is here this evening. But again, this is typical. You've seen these before on other developments. Any questions or comments for the director? If not, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion passes with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero absent. Item 3C is to consider draft resolution authorizing execution of a contract with performance Construction and Engineering LLC at a cost not to exceed $71,967.50 for the South Street Sanitary Sewer Repairs. Oof. So moved. Motion by Bruno. Second. Seconded by Burghardt. 
For the record, we believe Bruno caused the damage, driving in his little car. I'm sure there's, uh, I'm sure there's some off-color joke to. <laughs> so with that, shall I? Yes, uh, please do. Yes, sir. please. God so us. during a routine sanitary sewer televising, staff identified a partial sewer collapse in three locations on an 18-inch sanitary sewer. Because the sewer is 20 feet deep, the back hose that the city owns will not dig this deep, nor do we have the trench safety equipment necessary to make the repairs. The project was advertised and one bid was received by Performance Construction and Engineering LLC for $65,425. Staff is recommending that a 10% contingency be included in the overall not to exceed amount due to the depth and to account for any unforeseen field changes that may occur. Um, as would be typical with any change order, they would have to be approved first by the city administrator before they're applied to the, to the contingency. Uh, the amount is within the current budget slated for the sanitary sewer rehabilitation project. Um, and again, there's more information in your packet and also Director Babica is here. You can personally answer any other questions you might have. Any questions or comments for the director? Alderman Bruno. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, director Babica, uh, thanks for answering the questions earlier. Um, and I'm, I can't remember if I saw it in here before. Were there any, uh, this, this services the uh, Pepper Valley subdivision? Correct. That basically quadrant of the area of Is the, the city. Uh, so have there been uh, uh, previously unexplained backups that maybe in that area or nearby that we go, ah, this makes sense. Staff's responded to several sanitary sewer overflows within that area, which has caused us to bypass pulp, which we've coordinated with the Illinois EPA in accordance with state regulations. Okay, so knock on wood. Okay, thank you. Now, as a kid, Director Babica, I used to <laughs> sail down the creek. Mm -hmm. And when we were so dared, we'd go under the, that's not a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would, yeah, the, we, we have a separate sewer system I'm, I'm within the city, <laughs> so, but that is generally unwise. <laughs> Thank you for, anyone else, questions or comments for the director? Alderman McGowan. Thanks. Um, hi, Director Babica. Um, I'm also curious about the previous problems that have um, been noted regarding the sewer backups. Did, mm -hmm. did those backups affect um, homeowners in the Pepper Valley subdivision, or was this more of like a city water, wastewater type of thing that homeowners maybe would not have even noticed? This goes back quite a number of years. It predates myself as well as uh, Stephanie. So, um, but what I can tell you is that as a matter of routine, uh, the maintenance staff identified areas where there was a potential for a sanitary sewer overflow. And when heavy rains were predicted or when a heavy snow melt was predicted where the conditions could lead to a, an issue, they would take proactive steps and proactive measures to limit the likelihood of a backup into a property. Okay, so do you anticipate there being like major improvements once these repairs have been completed? where people won't notice like their backyard flooding as much. I'm trying to get a better sense. Well, again, of you're, you're, you're confusing drainage with sewage. Yeah. And drainage is, uh, we have, uh, as I briefly said, we, we have a separate system. So the drainage and a runoff and the storm system goes through one set of system of collection systems and the sanitary goes through a second. Yeah, I know that. So our goal is to make sure the two don't mix. Right. So where were the sewer backups taking place? Well, again, the, the sanitary sewer overflows were basically taken. Uh, we were pre-positioning pumps along Williamsburg and then within the Pupper Valley area. And again, when those pumps had to run, they were in accordance with the Illinois EPA regulations and standards. Okay. All right, that's good enough for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? We have a motion. We have a second. To approve the contract as summarized, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion passes with 10 affirmative votes. Thank you. Zero nay votes and zero absent. Item 3D is to consider draft ordinance amending Title 7, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Chapter 4, Traffic Schedules, Section 13, Schedule 8, 
excuse me, 13, daytime parking permit areas. Woof. Stephanie? We need a motion for Stephanie. Alderman Marks? Second. Alderman Burkhart makes the second. You guys are like brutal up here. Yeah. <laughs> Just doing our job. Uh, so the police department uh, has reviewed the current parameters of the residential parking permit program inclusive of the hours of applicability, including a thorough review of the current ordinance and observation of the day-to-day -day activity in the current permit locations. Uh, the proposed amendment addresses concerns as they relate to enforcement during non-school days. And Chief Passarelli is with us this evening who can answer any questions or tell you uh, why he's recommending what he's recommending. Alderman Clemens, questions or comments for the Chief or for Stephanie? I, I just would like to hear. Absolutely. Does this relate to when that gentleman spoke? Correct. This oh. is, yes, this is yeah. about the parking area around the high school. Gary, exactly, yeah. That's correct. Um, in regards to that um, gentleman that came here, we evaluated the area around the high school. Uh, for two weeks, I went out and evaluated and watched school release every day, um, spent time in the permit area. Uh, I know one of the concerns was parking availability for uh, afternoon school staff that was arriving. Uh, it's a very busy area. You know, there's over 1,800 students and staff that are in that area at any one given time. Uh, it seemed to me that the, the timing of the ordinance from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. was accurate based on the activity. There's a, a lot of activity before school, athletes coming in to use the facilities. After school, many of those teams start having their events. And what I was able to observe over that period of time was a lot of relocation of cars into the permit area, um, which to me um, could lead to a concern if we were to move that time back to, say, 3 p.m., that that area would quickly fill in. And I think the intent of this ordinance all along was to assure that those residents, with the high school being in a residential area, were able to get access to their driveways and their own um, properties. So it seemed to me that the timing worked. Uh, based on everything that I observed out there. Uh, the other aspect of it was every day over that two-week period of time between 310 and 315 there were no less than 10 parking spots that opened up on the east side of Logan which is a, a legal parking area for any of the staff that needs that location um, and I did observe school staff park in those spots um, every day. Um, so I don't think that's as much a concern based on what I saw that day. Uh, one of the things that we did want to change is the hours of applicability being during the school days only. Uh, our neighbors to the north do the same thing. Uh, I think that again was the intent of this ordinance when school was in session to assure that residents could get into their driveways and into their, their neighborhoods. Uh, we do receive some calls during the summer to enforce it, uh, but they're definitely in the minority and they're on a case by case basis. Uh, but for us, I think it makes it cleaner and easier to enforce if we change it to just school days only. You're welcome. Alderman McGowan. Thanks. Thanks, Chief, for that um, info. I guess, okay, can you um, clarify the day that you observed the spots opening up mm -hmm. between 310 and 315? Mm -hmm. Was that every day during the two weeks that the That was every area, day. It was every day. Every day, correct. All right. And um, I was just looking at the previous, or the current ordinance, um, it just looks like the only thing being changed, as you mentioned, is the fact that now it will include the words um, on school days. Correct. So when you do get people calling during the summer complaining about people, many cars being parked in front of their home, mm -hmm. that will no longer be something that the police department will be enforcing because it won't Correct. be a school day. Correct. Okay. And how does this relate to half days? Or days where like there are finals in the morning. I mean, is that just kind of? I think we'd have it to play. Still, will be just the six a.m. to four p.m. Correct. Just for simplicity and. Correct. Okay, and do you feel that the police department will change the way that they've been enforcing these parking regulations? Will there be more enforcement, or a kind of about the same? I think you you won't see a change. You know, during the day, that's one of the responsibilities of the community service officers. They um, 
handle the parking deck in those downtown areas, make a round around the high school and the areas that are affected by this permit program. And then if we receive calls throughout the day, a patrol officer would respond and address it. Uh, but I don't think you'll see added enforcement because I, I think what we're doing seems to be effective. Uh, we actually have very few violations that occur. Uh, so I, I think it's a good program. It seems to be working. And um, to follow up with what you just mentioned about when a concern is reported mm -hmm. um, outside of the normal patrol patrolling that's done, will that officer only look at a specific area, like a half block in front of the address where the complaint was was made, or will they kind of look at the whole area? They'd look at the whole area. They would respond to that specific complaint. But obviously, if they're responding to that area and see other violations, uh, they could handle those as well. Uh, but generally, it's that one complaint, that one vehicle that we would receive notice about that the officer would investigate. OK. Um, all right, well, thank you. OK, you're welcome. Anyone else? Alderman Burkhart. I just want to say I support the, you know, this ordinance. It's a tough area. You have so many competing interests with residents and students and staff and afternoon staff and um, pedestrians and bicyclists and I, I think you do a good job there it's it's more um, it feels more probably to congested than ever just as um, uh, you know as people uh, there, a lot of houses are under construction there and getting added on to and bigger there's one that has a three-car garage right across the street from the high school now so um, I think we're doing the best we can with trying to accommodate a lot of needs over there so thanks anyone else there is one issue that should be noted by and I certainly know the chief and Stephanie Dawkins understands this but the council should as well the sign conversion will not take place immediately right uh, so with respect to that issue while the ordinance reads X to X if a sign should read differently we're not going to enforce it accordingly we're going to be reading from the ordinance as opposed to what the sign might say. Does that make sense? Because there, there is a mixed bag of signage out there, but we simply can't convert it all in one fell swoop. So is there a way to, or would it make sense to communicate that to the students, to the public, to let them know, you know, you can park here legally. It's your legal right to park here on a non-school day even though the sign says no parking on you know school days mm -hmm. i mean we could coordinate that, that. Fair. we can put that in the newsletter we sure. can put that in social media we can the school it. oh sorry the school resource officer can communicate it as well through the school put that in the daily the herald and the there. kane county chronicle <laughs> <laughs> um and also um are there going to be some areas of total confusion where someone's going to say oh well i thought uh, I could park here legally because, you know, outside of like the high school streets, are there going to be some overlapping areas where you just still can't park there and people are going to get confused saying, oh, well, I thought that the sign didn't matter anymore that you can park here. Do you anticipate any situations like that? I don't because they seem to follow it now. Uh, we have very few issues when you get over to the area of Center and North and Richards. Um, it, it's applicable now and we have very few violations in that area. Right, so I don't think you'll see a change. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? On the motion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you, Chief. Okay, thank you. New business, ladies and gentlemen. If any of you, oh, Alderman McGowan. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I've just been wanting to mention something about this the past few weeks. Maybe going back to the beginning of the summer, but I'd really like to get more regular updates on what the city is doing in regard to environmental concerns and trying to like um, move our city in more of a green direction. And, and I know we, do, we already have a lot of, um, I guess, initiatives in place, large and small, but I really feel like it would be helpful for me to um, get, just as I said, more regular updates. And I do feel that there are more things that the city of Geneva could be doing to become more environmentally friendly. So I guess I just wanted to throw that out there and kind of find out if we're going to be getting any updates or what, where, we're, kind of where we're at right now with, in terms of 
environmental stewardship. Do you want to address the topic you and I discussed as well sure. with respect to Actually, we've been working on, on taking an inventory of all of the things that we are doing or in progress or we anticipate doing, and we're in the process of populating our environmental stewardship webpage with that information. So we're in the design phase right now. Um, I think probably in the next couple of weeks you'll see that being unveiled and posted to the website, which will show exactly what you're looking for. Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing that. Thank you so much. Thank you. If any of you so choose in the next, doesn't matter when, to have dinner at Jen Ho, please wish, wish Mrs. Lee and her family a happy 50th anniversary. 50 years. Isn't that something? Unbelievable, isn't it? Extraordinary. And for the council members, it's twice the cost. So with that, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So motion by Alderman Clemens. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned.